Shalom. I want to welcome everyone to the house of the Lord Sheep of Israel. I'm Elder Michael Johnson, and today we're going to be going through something that is pretty, pretty interesting. I um, spoke to one of my contacts actually not too long ago, in um, which we're inviting them three, those three idiots that you see up there. And they sit there and they first, um, they, they wanted to lie. They wanted to tell a bold-faced, unadulterated lie because they said from the beginning that they wanted to talk to me in the back and they didn't want to do it openly. Now they're telling him they don't want to sit in the back because I supposedly delete things to where they not where it won't be shown and they want to expose it in the front. Now, I'm going to show when I'm, I'm not doing... Ozan today. I'm not doing Ozan the Liar today, but I will be doing Ozan the Liar next week because our focus is going to be on Javier to prove to him exactly what I've been telling him the entire time that he has nothing 
absolutely to do with the Bible. And I'm going to show you all Bible, how he don't have nothing to do with the Bible. They told me a couple of things. And they they sat there and they ran it through one of my contacts and said, oh, we will come on if he do it in the front. Now, the same thing as I'm sitting here right now. All they have to do is put on there that they're there. And we have no problem to where I set up a Zoom session right now to where they can click in and we'll switch it over live. But I know neither one of those, what they want to call themselves, uh, boys or men, whatever they want to call themselves, I know they won't do it. But just as I said before, and I'm making this 100% clear to Javier, 100% clear to Ozan, and 100% clear to Henry Stevenson, the liar. That I make myself clear because they wanted to sit there and try to have another chit chat and all that. They wanted to call. He wanted my phone number where he can call me. And I'm making this clear to them right now. I'm not your friend. I'm not your associate. I'm not a fellow teacher, as you guys are a teacher of lies. You guys are 100% an enemy. You're an enemy of God. You're an enemy of mine. So don't ever think that you guys are friends in any way with me or we just can be associates. It's never happened. Two, as um, um, this Henry guy, he said there made statements even about Dr. Shao. And same as I tell anyone. Once you once you did that, you broken all straws with me. And that's why I told him. And see he sat there and he was saying it with um with urgency and he was nervous about what was going on on the statements I made and I make this statement clear, which I'm gonna make it clear today. I'm going to completely shut down everything he's doing and why what I'm doing today. I'm going to expose their doctrine to everybody to show you that Ozan, that Henry Stevenson, and Javier are nothing but unadulterated liars. They, for some reason, try to keep teaching that they are one way and same as I said before, Ozan talking about somebody pulled up information on on the um, on Wikipedia. So again, to let this unintelligent man know, I don't study stuff on Wikipedia. That's something that you might do, but that's something I don't do. And to show you how ignorant that is, you don't know me. But then you want to tell me or try to tell people about someone else's study habits based on something else it shows your ignorance. And the same thing with each and every one of you guys showing that you guys are true Christians, what you are. So the same thing which you say you teach the Bible as well as I do, but it's contrary to one another. So it's showing you one person is lying as what you guys normally do. You guys continually want to get people to get into one thing and then you want to give a verse to drive what you do. So with KJBU and the same thing what we do, we hold to one book. We don't hold to concordances, which you guys hold to, which again, if I ever come into contact with you guys, I will show you, which um, Ozan will find out. That book he uses is a total lie because I will be focusing on you 100% next week. But the same thing as I told you about what doctrine is and same thing I'm going to educate uh, Henry because I know you guys are listening. I know you're listening because you guys will sit there and do stuff and then you come on your little radio station where you guys have about maybe about 5 or 15 people that listen to it because you guys are in a rural area where you do it at. But the same as I said, what I do is 100% different than what you guys do. 
We hold to one book that contained one doctrine. In the methodology that I used to study, my research methods, and all the methods that I use, is formally for a contextual framework within itself. Something that you guys don't know nothing about. So the same as I'm educating you on this, the same you'll see where it's based on the schema and the outline, which is one can view the beliefs in what, what I'm talking about. So we're going to get the understanding here and we're going to say and show you as with a Hebraist, which evidently neither one of you guys know what that is. You're going to find out exactly what it is. You're going to find out how the Bible actually works because using this is once you go into the Bible, the Bible has one schema based on many views and beliefs and values which derive to one truth, which I know that's what you guys don't understand. Many subjects are within there, but it still has one thought. Those many thoughts has one focus. There are many things to focus on, but one goal. And the goal is to get into the kingdom of God, which you can have eternal life. But I know you guys don't know that. So we're going to start looking at this and we're going to find out what's going on here today as we go through these scriptures. So I'm going to invite you on what I said before. We're going to look at some scriptures right now. So the same thing is what I'm telling you. We're going to look at Isaiah 34 in verse 16. Isaiah 34 and 16. And I want you to understand this clearly. It says, Seek ye out of the book. It's singular. Singular. Out of the Spirit of God and read. No one of these which becomes plural. This is something for they don't understand. Should fail and none should want her mate. Meaning you don't try to mate anything else to this book. But that's what you guys do. And it says, For out of my mouth have I commanded, and his spirit has it gathered them, which is the other books you guys choose not to do. And to make sure we're clear on this, you guys constantly say with the Apocrypha that it has the book of Enoch and the book of Joshua and all the, those are not part of the books. You can go and look at an original King James Bible and you'll see those books are not there. But for whatever reason, we had these three unintelligent men continually try to join those books to it or try to say something that's to it. Because the same thing he keeps saying, well, this guy is from the university and this and that. But I'm going to educate you on what's going on as we continually move forward. See, one, the difference between university and the college is two different things. See, because they're different, but I know you probably didn't know that. The way you talk, I know you didn't know it. Because a college is an educational institution. That's what it is. And it offers a degree or a diploma for courses of a student that attends there. That's what it's for. That's what a college is for. And it, they don't offer such things as research programs. This is what a college do not offer or a number of courses offered. And many times a college is limited on what they offer. That's what colleges do. So Henry Stevenson, I know you are ignorant of that, but I'm going to tell you what a university is. A university is an authorized educational research institution that grants degrees and diploma to its students for those respective fields for such as a research program, which I know you didn't know that either. And the university includes a wide scope on how in-depth one wants to go. Not like colleges where you, a college has to be affiliated to a university or an autonomous body for the accreditation on what it's doing. I know you don't know that either. See, universities don't require such things as affiliations. Some of which, if you would have checked with some of your friends over at those Bible colleges, they would have told you the same information. The same identical information, but I know you don't know that. So many of these colleges, they do these things unwarranted. But you're still, as you guys have came up to, your in-depth research on what you guys call your in-depth research, which is the concordance. I'm going to show you why you guys don't know what you know. 
But just to put the university on something and teaching that someone could fail and knowing what what you what you don't know. Because the first thing you run to is a concordance. That's what you guys run through. A lot of those. And you run through commentaries and all these other things. So that you you 100% wrong on. But you go check it. You go check with somebody who's educated and they'll tell you that's just what I just told you. Cool. You guys sit there and said that I run with Geno Genius. So again, as I said before, you guys don't know me as I don't know you guys. I base what I know about you guys based on what you teach. And you guys teach ignorance. You teach ignorance is what you guys teach. You, you, you're no different than low down scum on what you do. But as I said, see, I can sit there and say that you look like you run with Ron Paul, like RuPaul. But is it true? I don't know because I don't know you. So I don't know if you run with RuPaul or not. But don't be running around saying who I run with and you don't know me. Because I can say the same thing about you, that you run around with RuPaul. So you guys got this, all this kind of trash coming out your mouth and you don't have anything to back it up, but just make accusations as most of what you guys always do. But the focus here is Javier. The focus is Javier. And why I make the statement I made. And I continually make it, and you're going to find out why today. The Bible has nothing to do with Javier. Nothing. And nowhere in the Bible is speaking of him. And the Bible tells you what God will do for a people. A people. Not a bunch of peoples, but a people, not the world, but an agreement that was made with Abraham, agreement that was made with Isaac, and agreement was made with Jacob. Not with the world as you guys see it, but the children of Israel, who name was Israel because he ended up being surnamed Israel, but his original name was Jacob. That's what the Bible is based on. Not what you're talking about. Not some doctrine that you did. The agreement was not made with the children of the first where you said um, Abraham was a Gentile. Again, another lie. But we're going to find all this out real early. So I'm going to show you something even more so here. Well, I want you to look at Genesis chapter 12. We're going to go to verse 1. Well, we'll start at verse 2. And we just see what he says here. It says, I will make of thee a great nation and will bless thee and will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. That's clear as day. Now, he's making a promise to Abram. He changed his name later to Abram, but he's talking to Abram. And he will make him a great nation, not an Israelite because he's not an Israelite. That's what you're still missing, and he's not a Gentile. If he was an Israelite, then Jacob would be his father. This is showing you the ignorance and the stupidity when you're having people who really don't know the Bible, and they're playing with the Bible. So we want to see some things here, and we're going to find out a lot of stuff here, and we're going to see what's going on there. So let's, let's, let's go through this, and we're going to see what's going on, because he said he promised them something. And we're going to look at this promise on what he said. So we're going to hit three and then we're going to see it says, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee and in thee shall be, shall all families of the earth be blessed. We see this clear here. It's showing you about Abram. It's clear, perfectly clear, but we want to see more so and find out why the statement is being made. So when you look at Genesis chapter 35 and verse 10, it says this, and we're going to see something that's real clear. I want you to focus on this one. So in verse 10, it says this. It says, and God said unto him, thy name is Jacob. Pay attention to this. Jacob is not the father of the world. 
Jacob is the father to the children of Israel, which his name you're going to see is changed. He said, thy name shall not be called no more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. Jacob. Jacob was renamed, who was called Israel now, but not Isaac or Abraham. It was Jacob. So the children of Jacob became Israel, and now Israel is now Israelites because they came from Jacob. So it's not to the world, but it was showing you, proven in Scripture on who these people are. So the same thing as Abram. As you stated, one thing that was clear that you said in your, in which I will be showing in the next week, showing where you said Abram was a Gentile and you lied. Abram or Abraham was a Hebrew. And you'll see this right on, actually, let's go right here. Let's look at this. We're going to go to Genesis to just show you the lies. See, because they'll tell you things and, it's, and, they, and they just tell you, but then people who believe you, then it shows they're foolish because the Bible speaks for itself. So people who listen to you, they shows how foolish they are. But we'll see right here in Genesis chapter 14, verse 13. And it says, And there came one at the, the one that had escaped and told Abram, Abram, that's Abraham, the Hebrew, Telling you clearly, he's not a Gentile. He was a Hebrew. Not a Gentile, not an Israelite. He was a Hebrew. Clearly Satan is here. But for whatever reason, you guys choose not to go through Scripture. You want people to believe something that you're saying and you're not looking at what the Scriptures says. You guys take scripture and you just, oh, then you'll just run real, run from scripture to scripture. Oh, yeah, pop, 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 go, go, go here, go here, go there. Nobody knows what you're saying. Show them so they can see and put together your lie. And just something real quick. Have you ever noticed, even when you talk to the guy that, that I'm talking about, have you ever noticed I don't ask you guys questions? Why would I ask a, a liar a question? And you know all you're going to get is a lie. That's why I don't ask you guys questions. You guys ask me a lot of questions and I'm always asking something, but you never notice I never ask you guys a question. And that's the reason why. Why would I ask a liar a question? It makes no sense. So when we looked at Genesis in chapter 12, verse 3, as I said, he said he would bless them that blessed thee, and he would curse them that cursed thee. But all the other people of the family would be blessed, said to Abram. He will bless them with understanding and curse them that have a bitter end, that seek to cause you ruin or stumble. That's all he was saying all the time. So all the families that will be blessed, or wisdom is given on part of the covenant, which was actually end up getting given up to Israelites. We're going to see all this in Scripture. All this, we're going to walk it down all in Scripture. And the same thing as I said, we will open it up at any time for any one of them. And the same thing, even if they don't come in here today, right now, I'm going to still open it up in the back and wait for any one of them to come in there. Because they're sitting there saying that I don't like to do things in the open. And just as I said, I, I did the one on, um, when we did the one with um, Michael Holloway, he was just a fool, but you guys are more than a fool than he is. So why would I not put you guys on the front? People won't believe what you're saying until they see it coming out your mouth. So no way possible I would do something with you in the back. I told you guys that from the first time. And you guys tell me you guys didn't want to go in the front. Now you guys tell me I don't want to go in the front. That's why I've been telling you the entire time. But they go. But all this we got video on where you guys are saying this out your own mouth. But let's look at something. We're going to look at uh, Exodus. We're going to look at uh, Exodus chapter 19, and we're going to walk through it. Exodus 19, verse 5. And then I'm going to start showing you some other things that you don't know. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 5, it says, Now, for that reason, if you obey my voice 
indeed and keep my covenant, then you should be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine. Now, the reason he's saying this, which I'm going to explain to you, because the Spirit of God is talking to the children of Israel. He's talking to the children of Israel. Because he redeemed these people from the Egyptians. That was what's the purpose of it. You can read verse 4 and it's going to tell you the same thing. Because he's going to say, you've seen what I did to the Egyptians. But the main thing is, we want to walk through and show you that it's only talking about one people. So this is why I'm taking my time to make sure you clearly get through Scripture, all through Scripture, you're going to see he's focused on one people. One. Not a whole bunch of people as you think he is. In Jeremiah chapter 30, we're going to pick it up. 30 and verse 22. Make this clear. In verse 22, it says this. It says, And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. He is not talking about anyone else but the children of Israel, but the children of Jacob. That's it. So this covenant was made with Israel's children, Israelites, no others. So as with Javier, as with Javier, his people are not part of the Israelite family or as no others also. But he has no dealings with this. This is why I say what I say, because we're going to we're going to dig deeper and deeper into this. And actually, let's. Let's, let's start right here. Then, let me show you something to where you get better understanding. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 9. We're going to go to verse 27. And I challenge you to do something once I do this. I challenge you to do this. Because you're going to find out something that you're not going to like. And we're going to go to 927. It says, And God shall enlarge Japheth. Now we know this is Pathoff. You probably don't know it, but Pathoff. But he's talking about he's going to deceive Japheth. That's what he's telling you right here. And he, and he should dwell in the tents. So me and he going to dwell in the land of Shem. And Canaan shall be a servant. Now this is what he's saying. But we're going to see something where you guys are saying that the people over there now, anybody who's telling you that the people over there right now is the people, I'm going to show you the clear lie. And this is why you know this is a lie. We're going to go here and then I'm going to park there for a second to make sure we clearly get it. Jeremiah chapter 23. 23, and we're going to go to verse 6. It says, In the days of Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. They're going to dwell safely. And this is, and this is, his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteous. So why in the world is they not dwelling safely over in that land? So you need to answer that question. Because he's going to bring them in the land. He's going to make sure these things are going to happen. He's going to make sure all these things are going to be right when he bring them back into their land, they will dwell safely in their land. But I want you to pay attention, real close attention to two things, two things, two close things that I want you to pay real close attention to. And I want you to pay attention to why those people that's over there, that's dwelling there are bastards. Cause one, I want you to pay attention to a bastard and I'm going to show you this and show you why we're going to look in the law and make sure we got the law down packed. We're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 32, 23. We want 23. And we want verse 2. It says, A bastard should not enter into the congregation of the Spirit of God. Even to his 10th generation, he should not enter into the congregation of the Spirit of God. So I want you to clearly get this. A bastard would not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Period. And I want you to understand what a bastard is. Clearly the ones that mix in with Japheth. This is clear. A bastard. See, you can't have, even where you look at the example, where you can have a, a single black woman and a black man have a child, and they walk away from each other. 
that child is not a bastard. You can say she's a single, she's a single mother, but the child is not a bastard. But they teach that those are bastards. So just to show you what a bastard is and why the bastard will not dwell in the land, and it tells you this even more so when we get to Zechariah, and we're going to find out a little bit more in verse 9. Chapter 9, we're going to look at verse 6. And it says, And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Now my challenge is this. I want you to look up Ashdod. You look it up. Ashdod is going to show you Tel Aviv, Israel. If not, I, I can... Actually, let me see. I could pull, well, I could pull that up. But you'll see that Ashdod is, is Tel Aviv, Israel, right now. And, and that bastard will never enter into the congregation of the Lord. We just seen it. In Deuteronomy 23, verse 2, a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Spirit of God, even unto his tenth generation, and a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, which we know that Japheth should dwell in the tents of Shem in the same location as time. So can you answer that? See, these are the things that we need to make sure we clearly get when you run in precepts as you guys don't know. See, because it's saying he's going to enlarge Japheth and he should dwell in the tents of Shem, which is Shem is in, the, is in the land. His land is over there in Ashdod. That's where it is. It's in Ashdod. But we see here where they're going to dwell safely there. So if they dwell in safely there, why is it not safely being, why is not safety being held there? Because a bastard should not dwell in, the, in that land. But a bastard is there. It's telling you right here. And you see, and it says a bastard should dwell in Ashdod and he will cut off the pride of the Philistines. Exactly what's going on even to this day. See, these are the things you need to be able to answer. But those answers you cannot give because what you do, you guys do camera tricks and you tell lies to get people to try to find other ways to do things. But we're going to keep honing in and we're going to keep tightening up the chain to show you that it has nothing to do with other people. It has nothing to do because you guys want to sit there and say, just because I say, Javier don't have nothing to do with the Bible because God say he don't have nothing to do with the Bible. But then you guys want to say that people is racist. That don't have nothing to do with racism. Has nothing to do with it. In fact, tell me this. Tell me this. We're going to go to Isaiah. I want to show you something to Isaiah. And I'm going to show you why I do what I do on that. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 66 in verse 8. And can you answer this? It says, who have heard of such a thing? Who have seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made and brought forth in one day or a nation be born at once? Who heard of such a thing? Why I say that and why this is saying that is why I show you even in the beginning of, a, of, of some of my teachings, I show they need to remember that May 1948. Because that's the day that these people was given the land of Jerusalem, and they called it Israel. This is why. This is literally why I show that. Can a nation be born at once? And that's what they say, and that's why they're still fighting for a nation, and they calling themselves a certain name. The problem is, he's not going to change what he's doing. Just because people is over there doesn't mean they can take the right or have the right to an inheritance that don't even belong to them. This is what's going on with Javier. Javier is trying to claim something that do not belong to him. In fact, um, we're going we're gonna to dig more into this and we're going to tighten up the chains a little bit more. And we're going to see something in Exodus chapter 6 in verse 4. It says, I... And I have also established my covenant with them. He established his covenant with them. But we need to know who this is and what it's talking about. So we know that Christ, Jehovah, established a covenant with, with Abraham, with Isaac, and later with Jacob only. He says, he's saying this right here. 
you see, you see right here where he he's going to tell you all together, and you're going to see where he's talking about. So it says, "I have established my covenant with them. I have given them the land of Canaan and the land of their pilgrimage, where wherein they were strangers." So, for example, I want you to think about this. For an example, just for a pure example, if your father, Javier, if your father, Javier, have left $20 million behind in, in the will is to the children of whatever his name is. It's, it's $20 million left to the children of Frias. Just say that. So now, the children of Freyas, if anyone who's claiming who's doing the will of the father of him, now they can claim part of it. No, it don't work that way. See, because people just start trying to attach their names to it. And it don't work that way. That's what you're doing. You're doing that, what you guys are sitting there, you guys are lying to people and telling them they're part of the covenant and God got rid of them and all this and all that. And what you got to remember is this. The reason this all happened, the reason what's going on is the children of Israel experienced something with the Egyptians and you're going to see this. Actually, let's look at verse 5 and you'll see where he talks about it. It says, including I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel. You're not saying it's not the groaning children of the world. It's not the groaning children of anyone else, but it's the children of Jacob's is what it's saying. I heard the groaning of the children of Jacob is what he's saying, whom the Egyptian kept in, keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. You see, it's not talking about the world. And you can see it's talking about other people doing something to other people. So, most people say, I want part of something that you don't have part of. You see it right here. It's right here, clear as day. So you see these things that's happening, but then to help you more so, actually, let's, let's, let's put something together here. I want, you to see the, I want you to see the differences. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 21, because I want you to see a difference here. And we're going to look at verse 10. Why? Because I want you to see something even with Sarah, the mother. I want you to see something with her. Real, real special what she said. And we're going to go to Genesis 21, verse 10. And we're going to see something that happened with Ishmael. And what she said about what she wanted Abraham to do with Ishmael, who was not her child. She said, wherefore, she said to Abram, cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. You see that there. So what this is clearly saying, which I know is hard for you to take, but what is it saying is your lineage in you guys experience, you just need to be educated on a few things. See, because I'm going to also educate you on Mexican. I'm going to show you what that is. I'll prove to you what you are. Because However, there was no Mexicans in bondage in Egypt. Keep that in mind. You was not in Egypt in bondage. You, your mother was not Sarah. See, much as people want to be part of something, you got to remember, it was a whole world still going on and it was honed in on certain people and those other people. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, a Hebrew, Isaac, a Hebrew, and Jacob, a Hebrew, and later surnamed Israel. Other people, just plain people. But we're going to hone in on this more. We got to get more in on this. And it says, wherefore, saying to the children of Israel, not children of the world. The children of Israel is singular. It's not sitting there and joining to the world. Cause we're going to take care of everything else, but I'm just showing you, this is talking about one people. 
and you can sit there and say whatever you want to say. He's not changing from what he's saying. You guys didn't come from there, which I'm going to show you where you came from. You have no part in this, but we, but let's, let's keep going. It says, I am the spirit of God. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will rid you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with a great judgment. He's talking about the children of Israel. Not Mexicans. Javier. Not Mexicans. Let's look at verse 7. It says this. It says this. It says, I will take to you, to me, for a people. And I will be to you a God. He would take the children of Israel to him for a people and he will be to us a God. That I am the spirit of your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I don't care how you play this, how you want to flip it, whatever. This is clear right there. So you have a problem here. And he will be us to us a God. This is actually... Let me let me just I just want to make sure we clearly getting all this together as we getting ready to get into what we need to really do. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 3 it says this. It says this, and, and this is what any this is for anybody. It says, I will give thee treasures of darkness and hidden riches in the places thou may have know that I am I, the Spirit of God, which called called by thy name, I am, I am the God of Israel. The God of Israel. But people try to make him a God of all these other things, and he's not saying that. He's constantly telling you who he's the God of. In fact, um, he even says this in the law, but, but for some reason, People have a problem with this. This is this is why I sit there and, and say what I say. In Exodus chapter 5, verse 1, it says, And afterward Moses, Aaron, went out and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Spirit of God of Israel. Of Israel. It's not saying the world. It's not saying Mexicans. It's not saying the Spirit of God of whoever. It's not saying that. He says, let my people go, who he already said, I will take to you guys, to me as a people. This is the problem. This is the whole problem in the whole premise of all the, all the confusion because you guys are trying to put a belief system on people and lying to them. When he is clearly telling you, he's talking about one People, the God of Israel. And you see this also in the, actually, let's go to Apocrypha, which you don't believe, but we're going to go to someone who says it, who you believe on one side, but then on the other side, you don't believe it. We're going to look at, we're going to look at First Adres. I want to look at First Adres, who is Ezra, but you say he was not expired, which is stupidity on top of stupidity. But we're going to go to First Ezra. And we're going to look at verse chapter 55, and we're going to go to 50, 66. Let's go to 66. Let's look at something. Let's look at something. We're going to get this right. And we're going to go to 66. And it says, Wherefore, when the enemies of the tribe of Judah and Benjamin heard it, they came to know what the noise of the trumpets should mean. I want you to pay attention to what's getting ready to happen here. I want you to pay real close attention to what's getting ready to happen. Verse 67, it says, And they perceived that they that were of the captivity. Remember the one that he was just talking about in, in, in Egypt? He's talking about of the captivity. Did build the temple unto the God of Israel. You see, he's not sitting there saying it any other way. The God of Israel. 
This is the problem. This is the whole premise. This is the whole problem of everything. In fact, uh, you'll go over here with, let's go look in the New Testament and see, see what the New Testament is saying right here. We're going to look at the New Testament. We're going to go to Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Why? We, we, we just trying to get some foundation here. 68, it says this. It says, Blessed, wisdom is given be the creator of God of Israel. You see, it's not changing. It's still telling you it's talking about Israel. Israel is the focus. It don't change. He's been saying it from the beginning. He done said it in the middle and he's saying it even here. In fact, you, know, you probably don't even want to believe Yahweh or Jesus. We'll use Jesus because that's what y'all know him by. But we're going to use that for, for your education. We're going to go here. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 15. Pick it up at verse 24. Why? Because he's going to tell you out his own mouth. It says, and this is talking about Jesus. It says, but he answered and said, I am not sent. What part do we miss here? I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And the house is talking about the family. So it's saying, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the family of Israel. That's it. So why do you keep messing this up? Because you're not going to change anything. Nothing's going to change. I don't care how much you go through and try to make it, oh, well, if you have to see it this way or you have to see that that way, you can do this all day long. It's not going to change nothing. And one of the biggest problems people have, they'll go run to Paul. Oh, well, Paul said this and Paul said that. They try to hold Paul as this, this, this guy who's holding everything. Paul made this clear himself. In fact, uh, we'll look at Paul just to make sure. Some of the same people who you hold at your highest or at your highest esteem, and you're gonna to try to sit there and try to hold Paul there. But let's look at this. We're gonna look at Acts chapter 26. We're gonna look at verse 6. It says, Now I stand and judge for the hope and promise made of our God unto our fathers. Made unto who? Made unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, who now is Israel. He says, Unto which promise are 12 tribes, 12, 12 sons. Where do you keep getting it's the world? Because we're going to figure out what the world is talking about in one second. This is where people have the biggest issue because people get jealous based on stupidity. When a God is telling you, I have taken one people, it's the same as a man is married to one woman, the same as all this stuff that goes on with one person, all of a sudden, everybody want to want him to be a whore. And it's craziness. That's what you're doing. The promise is to 12 tribes. And he said this and he made this clear. I want you to really understand what he's saying and what he's saying about you. Let's look at this and all together. We're going to look at Isaiah. We're going to look at something in Isaiah. And we're going to go to chapter 40. 40 and we're going to look at 17. Why? Because I want you to see it. It says, all nations. Now you included in that conglomerate. All nations before him are as nothing. Because his focus is Israel. So all nations before him are nothing. They are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. You can dislike this all you want to. Don't like it, tear it out your Bible. But I keep telling you, throw it away because it don't belong to you. You can't change this because as I said from the beginning, I'm going to make sure you, cl you clearly get this. And this will always sit in the back of your head from here out. In fact, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Let's go back over to Uncle Idris. Let's go back over to Uncle Idris. Just like I told you some things before. And this is why I told you. They took things out of the Bible because they didn't want you guys to see them. Based on what's going on here. So we just showing you some things that's coming up front. We're going to look at... Uh, 
Uncle Idris, and this is Ezra, the same person, we're going to look at 14 verse 11. And this is what they want to, don't want to do. It says this right here. It says, for the world is divided into 12 parts. I, hmm, I wonder, hmm, 12 parts. And the 10th part is gone already. They was the one that was broken off from where we're talking about where he took, he took two, he kept two and put away the 10. It's divided into 12 parts and 10 parts are gone already in the half of the 10 part. Think about that. All other nations are nothing. Actually, he gets better than this. He gets better than this. Let's 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 dig a little bit more. Let's go to Second Adrees. Same thing, same place, Second Adrees, chapter six. And I just want I just want you to focus on what's going on. We're gonna look at verse fifty six. And the reason why I want you to see this all together. This is the reason why. In fifty six. And you'll see, it tells you this. It says, as for other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said they are nothing. Huh. I wonder where they come from. For all other nations before him are as nothing. I wonder where... Ezra is getting that from. You think he's getting it from Isaiah? Do you think he's getting that from Isaiah? He says, he has said they are nothing. But he's going he to go a little bit more. But be like unto spittle, like spit. That has liking that is abundance of them that drop from falling from a vessel. You getting the point? He's telling you every other nation to him because he only focused on Israel. I'm going to show you something even with James. James, this is Jesus' brother. Let me show you something. Let's see. Let's see with James. We're going to go to James and we're going to go to 1, chapter 1. And let's see what James is doing. It says, James, the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad. Everybody is focused on these 12. Where do you keep getting the world? <laughs> I'm telling you, this is comical. It gets more. It says, my brethren, I count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptations. Exactly the point. Look what we're going through. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work is patience. But we got to remember those 12 tribes that he's talking about. Because you see here, when you sit there, and, and this is the one that you guys like to use. This is the one everybody use. Uh, John, we're going to look at 3 and 16. This is the one you guys use it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And you already see how you see the world. You see how you see the world. You see right here, the world is divided into 12 parts. That's to Christ. He's telling you up front. He, he sees it, it's divided into 12 parts. What part are you missing? Not the world. He's showing you this. This is why they didn't want you to see, oh, well, you know, uh, God didn't speak to them for 400 years. The stupidest lie that you ever want to hear. God can sit there and tell you he can't control something. So what he do? It's don't talk for 400 years. That sounds like it. That sounds like a God that has a pity party. That sounds like your God. Little G. See, in Jacob did this and let's look at something. <laughs> let's look at something. I'm telling you, this is comical. This is literally comical. And we're going to go to Sirach. Let's go to Sirach. We're going to go to 44. This will help you out. This might help you out. In 44, 23, it says this. 
It says, and he made it rest on the head of Jacob. He changed his name to Israel. And watch this. And he acknowledged him for his blessing and gave him an inheritance, including divided his portion, who Jacob divided his portion among the 12 tribes. Did he part them? That's why it says that he said that and gave it to his sons. He divided it between his sons, 12 of them. He had 13 children, which was a girl, but he divided it between the boys. This is what the problem is. And we have done this continually, 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 but for some reason you don't get it. So let's look at something as you send this in and we didn't did this all together. We're going to go to second of Greece, chapter five. We're going to pick it up at verse 23. And I know you should get this. You should get this all together. And we're going to pick it up at verse 23. It says, including said, Oh Lord, that bears rules of every wood of the earth. Think about that because I'm going to take my time for you to get that uh, every wood of the earth. In all trees thereof, thou hast chosen one, thou hast chosen thee, one only vine. Think about that. Out of all the trees of the earth, in, in all these things, he chose one. Why is he, he's giving you a silhouette picture and giving you comparisons because he wants you to know something on what's going on. And actually, I'm going to show you something else just so you know, just in case you you tripping because I know ignorance is not far from you. Ignorance is it runs in your DNA. In Amos chapter, actually Amos chapter three, we're on three. We're on three in verse one. Watch what he says here. In the, watch how clear this is. Hear this word that the Spirit of God has spoken against you. He didn't speak it against you, Javier, because you don't have nothing to do with this. He says, oh, children of Israel. You see how single, this is the craziness that people do. It's against the children of Israel, against the whole family, against the whole house, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. This, I'm talking about, I don't know what, I don't know how you can get more clear than this. It says, verse two, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Cause what? The earth, they, they're nothing. They're nothing to him. They like, they like on the spittle. You just seen, he said that. So he says, for that reason, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So we got to remember he brought the children of Israel, not Mexicans. God chose one only vine. So in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you out on something. But you need to do your, you have to do your due diligence. You have to do your due diligence. Then I'm going to tell you something. Do you know the difference? I want to know, do you clearly know the difference? And you are Mexican. Do you know the difference between a Hispanic, a Mexican, a Latino, and a Chicano? That's a question to you, Javier. See, this ain't, see, I told you, this is not no, 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 no hate teaching. This just asking you, do you know the difference between these? Cause I'm going to tell you what the difference is, but I want you to do your due diligence and you go look it up. How you little, have you, how your two little boo-boos help you? See, cause I'm going to tell you what they are and I want you to clearly get this. See, the problem is you guys keep coming, trying to sit there, say something about her breast. And when you come over here, you better know what you're talking about. And you don't. So I educate you. Why would somebody who can educate you ask a, a, a fool a question? Because you're going to get a foolish answer. So I don't ask you. So a Hispanic. I'm going to tell you what they are so this can help educate you. And later you'll know because I, I can almost guarantee you, you don't know. But a Hispanic. It can be used to refer to someone. Hispanic. The word Hispanic, it referred to someone mainly from Spain or a Spanish speaking country of a Latin American place. That's what a Hispanic is. Well-known people or descendants like their grandparents, their parents, etc. they call themselves Hispanics. But here in the U.S., the term Hispanic 
is commonly used in error. Did you know that? Did you know and used in error referring to some from Latin America saying that, you know, you, you know, they'll sit there and, and what a Hispanic can sit there. If you use it in error, it's talking about, you know, Cuba and Puerto Rico and Dominicans as Mexicans. Don't you know that's why Cubans have a problem when you do that? See, as a Mexican used as a term for Hispanic is 100% wrong. Did you know that? Because they can't use it. Puerto Ricans and Dominican Republic. Yeah, that's that's one thing. But when Mexicans use it, that's why they take offense to it. Did I tell you what, go tell a quarter Guatemala, a Guatemalan that they're Mexican and watch the issues you will get. Watch how proud they get based on you saying that. Because they don't like it. So you must see the difference between the two genders. Mexicans is nationally known around here and they use Hispanic. And it's a comparison between them. See, Mexicans refer to the inhabitants and they're native to Mexico. Did you know that? Mexicans, they're native to Mexico. Hispanics refer to Spanish or one that's Latin American descent and then they just resides here in the USA. So when they sit there and they see Hispanic, they from somewhere else most times or they from here and they could have been descendants from a Spanish area. That's what it's saying. Not from Mexico. Don't put Mexico in the, in, in, in this, in this group here. So I'm, I'm just going to educate you. So we got to look at that. And then you look at Latino. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Latino, it's a term. It's a term that's used from someone again from Latin America. They speak Spanish. People like from Cuba and Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. But Mexicans now use that term. Think about that. I promise you they use this. How do I know? I know too many of you. And I'm just educating you on what you're doing. They're showing you how foolish you are. And you got another term, Chicanos. Normally refer to someone who's born in the United States to Mexican parents or grandparents. It's considered Mexican American. Did you know that? Almost like blacks calling themselves African American. Can't stand the term because I don't use it. Did you know that? So when you're a Chicano, they telling you that they're Mexican American. The parents and everything's from Mexico, but they consider themselves Mexican American. Did you know that? However, they still people was born in Mexico in the United States and, and they refer to themselves as a Mexican or not. And they will not refer to themselves as a Chicano if they came from Mexico. Did you know that? And I know you know that because you have people, I guarantee you from there. But just like I said, I'm going to educate you. See, now we got the term Mexico or Mexican. See, Mexican can refer to someone born in Mexico, Mexicans. Someone has a Mexican citizenship or someone of a Mexican descent. Why? Because Mexican, the word Mexican is a mix. Did you know that? It's a mix of Spaniards. Did you know that? So what you got to look at is the trace your origin of Mexicans, because you'll find that most of them are able to trace the origin. And when the Spaniards or the indigenous people, when the Spaniards came over, they conquered you guys and the Hispanics don't have nothing to do with it, but they can trace their origins back to Mexico. So this, once the Spaniards came over and they, they conquered Mexico, most people don't know this. They conquered Mexico. And see, Mexicans, in what they was called at first, originally, which is wide known, worldwide, they was known as Aztecs. Did you know that? I know, go, go do your research. Go do your proper research. There was Aztecs Indians. Not Aztec Mexicans. There was Aztec Indians, like you can go in other parts of, in the United States, before the United States was conquered 
by the European Union, you can go in other places. You'll see they had Blackfoot Indians, Pequot Indians. They had all these different Indians. Chiquai Indians. They had all these different Indians. And then over on that region, they had Aztec Indians. But I know you didn't know this. So what happened when the Spaniards, which were the European, they mixed with the Aztecs because they already had conquered you. You no longer, Aztecs no longer became a pure people. Now they are mixed people with Europeans. Did you know that? Go do your research. I promise you, you're going to get it. This is where the name Mexican from Aztecs, Indians mixing with European to Mexicans. That's where this happened. That's why now it's Mexicans as Mexicans. It's children of Japheth. Like unto us, you have to separate the land of the promise and call it yourselves, and some people call themselves African Americans. Just to educate you. So if you didn't know, take this clip and go educate yourself. But let's finish up this more. Because this is what this is getting into. That's what this is telling you. This is showing you the comparison. Out of all the woods of the earth and all the trees there, thou hast chosen thee one only vine. That's why you see that. But let's look at it a little bit more. Verse 24. It says this. It says, in all the lands of the whole world, all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thee one pit. One pit. One location. Guess what, Javier? It's not Mexico. See, this is going to always be in the back of your head from here out. See, he chose one pit in of all flowers. I want you to think of all the flowers in the world. Think of every flower. Don't you know it got more than a million different species of flowers? It's more than one flower. It said of all the flowers. Of all the flowers. There of one lily. It chose one type of lily. One. He's comparing this to where you would know. Of all the depths of the sea, thou hast filled one river. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me educate you a little bit here. We, we're going to go into this and we're going to get into this. See, because you can see, I don't have to go run and, oh, well, you got to see this and you got to see this and you got to see this. In the concordance in G39, you see, I don't have to do that. Everything's right here in the Bible. But we're going to go to Genesis chapter 2 and pick it up at verse 10. Genesis 2 and verse 10 says this. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and came into four heads. See, this is where the issue came up at. But it don't have nothing to do with you. It don't have nothing to do with you. See, because you see why you why I said I'm going to educate you on some things because it was parted in the four heads. And this is why Jesus says a certain thing. I'm going to show it to you because I want you to know. I want you to know to show you we over here know what we're talking about. But you'll see this when he says this in, in John chapter 10. And he says this. He says, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring and they should hear my voice and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. This is why he's saying that. Because when this river went out, is people, when they went out, it was parted in the four heads. How do you know you don't know what this talking about? It's spiritual, spiritual talk. Spiritual talk. Yeah, I know you don't get it. So this is the problem. This is the comparison. And as it's saying right here, let's look at it a little bit more. It says, uh, in all the depths of the sea, thou hast filled one river, which we see, and all built cities thou hast hollowed Zion to thyself. You see this right here? It's clear. But watch, watch what he gets it. Watch how you do this. And all the files of all the files that are created, thou hast named thee one dove. 
Think about all the birds that's in the world. There's more than 600,000 different species of birds. And he's telling you, he named him one dove. He's comparing you to show you, to set you up, to show you exactly he's dealing with one people. But he's telling you, he says, and of all the cattle that are made, thou hast provided thee one sheep. Think about that. Think about that. Actually, let's let's look at something. And we go to, we go to Psalms. We go to Psalms. I want because I want you to see something. I want you to see something in Psalms. In Psalms 147. 147. And you see, this is all Bible. And you have devils like yourselves. Y'all sit there. Oh, he doing this. He doing it. No, bro. I'm showing you all Bible. Showing you exactly what this is saying. And the same thing you see here, we're going to look at verse 19. It said, he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel, not to the world. He had not dealt so with any nation and asked for his judgment. They have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So he's holding it to one people. He makes this clear over here. He makes this clear over here. With Uncle Idris. Let's look at let's look at verse 20, 20, 20, 20 uh. It says, and among the multitude of people. You see how he, he did all these comparisons from, from, from trees to lilies to animals to birds, and now he didn't got to the people. From all the multitudes of people, Mexicans too, you. That has gotten the one people. And unto this people whom thou lovest and giveth a law that is approved of all. I just showed it to you. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and judgment unto Israel. I just showed it to you. So what's going on with us? See, we, as I showed you in, in, in Amos, see, we had a problem. We committed sin against God. So God has set something up already in place, and I'm going to show it to you. Because I'm not embarrassed to say what we did was wrong. And we, we the ones got to get ourselves out of it. See, you want the benefits, but you're not part of the family. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can't make this up. You want the benefits, but you're not part of the family. So I want you to look all through your history. We're going to Deuteronomy chapter 28. I want you to look at something in verse 68. It says, And the Spirit of God shall bring thee into Egypt again. So he wants you to have that same comparison. He's telling me he's going to bring you to Egypt again. Meaning he's going to bring us into bondage. With ships. With ships. And the reason it's saying this, I want you to go look at when you get a chance, when you get a chance, go look at the Atlantic slave trade. And I want you to look at the people and I want you to look at the names. You'll see the name Yah in most of them last names. You'll see the name Yah there. The reason you're going to see the name Yah there is because our name mainly had his name at the end of our names. I know you didn't know this. It's letting you know, and we were sent out. And he's and watch, but watch what he said. He says, and by the way, there I speak unto you, that I should see it no more again. That's why he said, We're not gonna see it, but he got to bring us back. And it says, And there you should be sold to your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man should buy you. That's why we can't get out of this predicament. They not the cause of this. It was us. We don't have the issue. People try to make an issue with the white man or with your people because your people even enslaved our people. Did you know that? These things happen. But for some reason, you don't want to believe it. But now you want the benefits on what you see on somebody else's covenant. And now you want to take you. You want to cover it. But you have nothing to do with it. It has to do with disobedience to God. And we have to change from what we was doing. We have to change from what we were. Actually, it tells you this right here. And this is why he even do, he, I want you, well, let me, I'm going to take you to it. It's better to show it to you than to say it. It's better to show it than to say it. 
We're going to look at Hebrew, uh, Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse 23. 13, 23. Let's see here. Let's see here. 23, and we're going to look at 13. I mean, 23. It says, can an Ethiopian change his skin? Are you, are you seeing this? So he's saying, he's comparing this or a leopard is spots. So he's showing you how much, we, that's why he says, I have a problem with your family. I have a problem with the children of Israel. So can an Ethiopian change his skin? No. Can a leopard is spots? No. He said, then ye also do good that is accustomed to do evil. We need to change what we're doing. We need to change exactly what we're doing. This is why this is so important on what we need to be doing all the time. In fact, uh, I'm going to show you something in, in Isaiah. This is, this is the problem that a lot of us have. That a lot of us have. And we don't even want to look at it. We're going to look at Isaiah chapter 1, picking it up at verse 3. It says this, and it's clear. It says, An ox know his owner, and an ass his master crib, but Israel do not know. My people don't consider. We're so jacked up, we don't even know who we are. You sitting there trying to take an inheritance that you can't even get anyway. You trying to take over an inheritance that you have no rights to. You think about that. The same as they'll sit there and I guarantee you, you'll say the same thing. Oh, Paul was a... Paul was a white man and Paul was this, a pasty white guy. No, he wasn't. Paul was not nowhere close to white. But this is what they do where they try, when they try to put in the fix. And we're going to look at Acts chapter 21. We're going to go down to verse 38. I want to show you something, make something real, real, real clear for you. It says, so we'll see. I'm going to start at verse 37 so we'll know. It says, Including as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, may I speak with thee? Who said, can't thou speak Greek? I want you to get what he's saying. He says, art thou that Egyptian? He just see a black man. See, it wasn't mixed like that then. He said, Aren't you that Egyptian? Which before these days, made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness, 4,000 men with, 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 uh, that was murderers. To us, so you can't tell me, they say we all look the same back then as we did during the day. We all look the same. So we want to understand clearly what is being said all the time. But for some reason, for some reason, you have a problem with what God said to us. Now you want that promise. The promise ain't to anyone but Israel. And it's for Israel to have it. In, in, in uh, Isaiah chapter 46, and we're going to look at verse 13. It says, I will bring near my righteousness and it shall not be far off and my salvation shall not tarry. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel is my glory. So what part you not understanding? What part you don't get? See, when you're doing things according to the flesh, that's where you get into stuff where it's talking about everything contrary to doctrine. Everything contrary to doctrine. This is why we have that problem today. And, and the same thing is, actually, I'm going to show it to you what he actually did. I'm going to show you how uh, 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 Stevenson Stevenson, little Satan, Satanistic Stevenson. Show you what he did. He he went here to Romans chapter two and verse. I believe it started at twenty-seven. 
He said, yeah, he started at 28. He said, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. He's so crazy and so sickening, he don't even get this because you can't do things according to the flesh. It says, neither is circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. He's telling you up front. You had to mortify. Let me, let me, let me show you. I'm talking about ignorance runs rampant with these boys. Let me show you. Let me show you what's going on here. In Romans chapter eight and verse three, and he gets more into it. He says, for what the law could not do, it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to condemn sin in flesh. So it don't have nothing to do with something outwardly because if it's outwardly, guess what you're going to do? This is, see, this is what I'm saying. I don't have to go, oh, well, you do this and do that. No, I don't have to do that. I'm showing it to you right here in scripture because if you're doing it according to the flesh in Galatians chapter five, picking it up at verse 19, it says this. It says, now the works of the flesh are made known, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, ill emotions, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, rivalings, and such like. Wherefore, I've, I've, as I uh, tell you before, I have told you again, told you in time past, that they would do such things shall not, uh, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because you've been acting like a Jew outwardly, according to the flesh. That's craziness. That's why he said you ain't circumcised. It don't have nothing to do with you. But he says this, but he is a Jew, is a follower of Christ, which is inwardly. And the circumcision is, is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men, but of God. That's why you make all this stuff really clear for you when you sit there and see everything clearly. In, in John chapter four, picking it up at verse 24, where we can go down and it says, God is a spirit and they that worship him, worship him spirit and in truth. That's why it says this. But to show you what I just did right here is showing you what he's trying to sit there. Well, a Jew is not a Jew outwardly. And, and this and that, and you guys need to understand this. No, no, dude. I just showed it to you. I just showed you what Paul was saying in its fullness. But the problem is, you're going to start to sit there and fake people contrary. So the best thing for you to do, as you sitting there, you got Javier, who I know he's listening, is lying through his teeth. And it's showing you, it's only to one people. I just showed it to you. All other people to him are nothing because he made a covenant with one people, the house of Israel. So why are you going around lying? This is what you need to stop doing. And see the same thing as I told you before, you sat there and you told people, oh, he, we want to do this openly. Same thing I said. Oh, I got it open. And the same thing is, if you dare to come back, and just like I told you guys before, dare to come back here, I'm going to still leave it open in the back where you can come back there. And as soon as you guys come back there, I'm going to move you automatically to the front. Because just like I said, I will embarrass you on your doctrine. Cause your doctrine is, 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 is no good. And I made myself clear from the first time, these liars, these people, this Javier, Ozan and Henry, I'm not your friend. I'm not your fellow associate. You're a full blown enemy to me. So don't ever sit there thinking we will be friends over anything. Two, I don't debate. Why are you going to debate? And you guys want to debate. How are you going to debate something that can't, is not debatable? 
what you do, you prove scripture is right. And if you find a contradiction, you can show the contradiction, but you're too ignorant to figure that out. I'm talking about if you guys own the morgue, nobody wouldn't die. You guys took unintelligent to a new level of unintelligent. So the same thing, like I said, I'm going to open up the back. See, I go back there to where we do other classes, not sitting back there to go back there to, oh, we're going to, well, we want to deal with people. No, 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 no. When I deal with people such as you, I move you always to the front. Because you're a liar. And as your daddy, he's the father of those. So same as I said. It's open in the back and you can look down in the description, got live meeting and I will be there. And if either one of you guys show your face, I'm going to go live to show everybody how you lie. I will give you the floor for you guys to show any doctrine that you got to refute just what I just did. Any, I will give you an hour, two hours, whatever you need to show what you need to do. Not sitting there, well, you got to look at the concordance and that. No, 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 no. Show me in the Bible what you're doing. And I guarantee you, you can't refute it because I guarantee you from here out, this going to always be in the back of Javier's head. Because I don't care what he do. He's not the people. He is not the people. So what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release here and we're going we're gonna to go in the back. We're going to go in the back and you come on back there. And the same thing, like I told uh, each and any, any, any one of these fools, any one of them. I dare you to come back there because soon as you come back there, we going to go live. Exactly what you guys, what you said you want. And that's what I told you from the beginning when I told that little dumb Ozan the same thing. He done. Well, we want to talk to you privately. No, bro. I talk to people like you. Because I asked him, I said, you a Christian? He said, yeah. I said, no, no. We talk live. We talk live. I don't deal with fools like this. But they had taken the time to call themselves going to research somebody. Henry was so foolish and so unintelligent, going to sit there, I'm going to, we're going to expose the Hebraic doctrine. This fool didn't even know that it's a profession. Ozan so silly, he's sitting there talking about, I research uh, uh, Wikipedia. And all you got to do is go to the Vatican website where they started it at, right in Europe. You can go right to the Vatican, to their website, and it'll tell you they started in 33 AD. This shows you how stupid this man is. It's right there, and now they saying they the church and just because it got, they call themselves the Church of Christ. And the main thing is, anybody can take a name of anything and put a label on it and then say, this is us. That's not you guys. Bunch of fools. But a bunch of fools going to sit there and they're going to keep doing it. Because just like I said, you guys have given more material that I can go against for, I'm talking about, I can teach on you guys for the next two years just on what the material you guys put out. That's how ignorant you guys are. So we're going to break here. We're going to go over into the zoom and we're going to wait for these people. We're going to see what's going to happen. But if you come back there, I promise you we're going live. Cause I, I want every, I want, I want to show the world just like they did King Kong. I want to show the world your ignorance. And just like I said, we promise we'll give you the floor. It will not interrupt you at all for you to sit there to push your, push your trash. And when you finish, I'm going to tear your doctrine down. So we don't wait, but I already know you're not coming back. And I guarantee you, you're watching. See, I know you're watching. See, it's just like a rat where, you know, a rat can be in your house. He ain't going to peek his head out because he know you're there. 
He wait till you go to sleep to where he can come out. That's what you guys are. So with that, and just as I told you before I go, see, when you when you said that, said something about Dr. Shaul, I'm not going to stop until you're done. Your building doors are closed. See, and I already know, see, I'm getting more people over here than the law allow coming from you guys. We got more people from the Church of Christ coming in. I don't, it's almost like I need to open up a hospital from the silliness and the silly doctrine that you guys push. And we just going to keep releasing more and more people from your dumb doctrines. So with that, we're going to end it here and, and we're going to wait for these fools to come out. So with that, I say to each and every person until next time. Shalom. Thank you.